We're here, Montreal, Quebec, and today we're linking up with Justin Lee. We're gonna scoop in our pre-workout so we don't have to deal with the whole kerfuffle. This gym looks absolutely ridiculous. Hopefully we're able to get a good workout in and a good reconnection with our long lost brother, good reuniting. So we're gonna take this pre-workout on our way to the gym and then uh, we'll catch you there. Do you use the bar, wedge yourself under. And once you're ready, you want to find your hip placement. So you can go sit, so it's almost like center mass, and you just do a little leg press. You keep the position that you set in after unracking. The wider you go, the less the chance for back. It's going to mean more stability requirements. So if you can, go narrow, but also take a grip with the thumbs in if it's not too painful. And let that bar sink into your trap. You can feel it open up. I would use it like this. Regular grip. I'm not used to this whole thing, right? Like just make sure you have a little bit of <laughs> make sure you have a little bit of a I almost said shaft. So make sure you have a little bit of shaft in your hand. Just get a good shaft in your hand and just get a nice grip to grip on the shaft. The thinking behind it is that with high bar, you're a bit higher, right? So you need more knee flexion to make space for your hips to come down. Because doing low bar, you don't need nearly as much knee, knee like kind of knee travel forward. In the last four months, my only cue has been like, okay, more knee flexion, more knee flexion, more knee flexion. I'm like, I need quads, I need quads. And now Justin's just like ruining my whole life. He's like, no, no knee flexion for you. I still have to find a bar before I actually start squatting. Any motivational words for the camera before you hit this PR? Uh, let me think. Eat food, sleep a lot, get big. Call me Bucky Nick, is lucky that I'm innocent. Uh, if I didn't have no morals, I'd be menacing. Uh, how about a nigga rapping conscious, but he ignorant? Uh, how he find the hood, but still gon' go legitimate? Uh, how he fuck a bunch of bitches, but they still respect the women? He's a rolling, it's another. He just got the windows tinted. Homie stab me in the back, and that can never be forgiven. And my pride's been itching, man. I like the superstition. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You can't have my phone number unless we running up the digits. Let me meditate. I just need a couple minutes. Tryna low bump me, my girl is to the big ass bitch I get. And we're done. That's fucking amazing. Like first session, like pretty much using this janky large belt, no knee sleeves, no wrist straps, which helps with tightness. And if you have wrist pain, like I do, yeah, honestly, if you keep squatting, I think like 455 is realistic for a single. Loser. I want you to feel this because you're used to powerlifting belts. Like Jordan Shalom literally made fun of me. He's like, dude, that, that goes around my finger. That's what he said. <laughs> finger, guys? More like <laughs> Bleep, just cut the whole thing. <laughs> we wrong don't. sight, wrong yeah. sight. How much would that realistically do other than queuing? Justin's got a slim, slim ass waist. He's slim thick. No, yeah, it's not the worst, but if you try my belt with the sweater on, see if it fits. Yeah. Bodybuilding, the way I the way I look at it is, as soon as I'm, as soon as my breathing isn't the limiting factor, which it pretty much never is when I'm under five reps, I jump right back into my next set. And as long as the particular muscle group is still the limiting factor, like for squats, it would be my quads. For hack squats, okay. then I just go right back into it. For, for powerlifting, obviously, you want your nervous system like firing. Honestly, it looks good. The last one is the best, and it's the heaviest. So usually, as you go up in weight you'll feel like what is true form because more like it doesn't feel good, you're gonna eat shit. So I think definitely because this has been training with the bar, like high bar most of this time. So I think it's gonna feel better naturally to be a little more upright in the squat. Oh cool, I didn't wanna. No, no, you're good. It's just just a random dude that came up. Like, I know this guy since high school, he used to be my, my teacher for uh, like substitute yeah. teacher, so. Was that before you started lifting or what? Yeah. <laughs> 
That's a guy from Epic Meal Time. So we're done and dusted with the powerlifting portion of the workout. Oh, shit. You're dead now because you did way more volume than I did. And now on to the bodybuilding where we destroy you. Start with the hamstrings, we'll start with the line leg curl and then go from there. Workout done. Justin is taking us along the way. We're gonna go to a meat market. Not that kind of meat market, Justin. I'm gonna show you guys a little bit of the process when it comes to sourcing good, high quality foods. Canada has pretty high standards when it comes to overall meat quality and accessibility to grass fed local farms, all that different stuff. And we're gonna break it down. Oh, yeah. Um, my bad. I thought we we're going to uh, University Sausage Fest for meat on actual grocery. Shit. We've arrived. Yes, sir. Time to get some salads. <laughs> We've arrived at Jean Talon. This is the first section that I would probably go to. Unfortunately, I don't know if in Montreal they have pasture raised eggs, but that would be the first thing that I would go for. Eggs have pretty much the whole nutrient profile that you need as far as vitamins go. You could eat eggs. I think Vince Gironda did, what, 36 eggs a day? Unfortunately, they don't have pasture raised, so we'll be passing up on it today and ordering from our local farm. Now, the number one thing that you're probably going to want to look out for is any sort of casing or cased products. So sausages, even like chorizo and pork products, a lot of them have sugars. If you're trying to stick and adhere to a pure carnivore diet, my personal preference is to do solely beef. I'm not really a massive fan of pork, but it is very high in B1, which is thiamine, which supports thyroid hormone, all that different stuff. So we're gonna go to the grass fed section. So the number one thing that I look for whenever I'm sourcing my meat is to make sure it's grass fed, grass finished. The nutrient profile is a little bit better. Of course, do your best. If you can't get grass fed and finish, don't worry about it too much. But the ones that aren't grass fed are corn fed, soy fed, a lot more agrochemicals so it's going to be a little bit more difficult to get the nutrient profile that you want to support the muscle building the muscle goals but don't let perfect be the enemy of good if all you have access to is corn fed soy fed it's better to get that animal fat and that animal protein to make sure that you are getting the fat soluble vitamins it's just that the nutrient profile will be better on grass fed so the strip loins are absolutely amazing we've had them here before the fat is just crazy the quality on it when you get a pure grass fed local meat it's absolutely Absolutely amazing most of the time when I'm shopping at home I'll just get ground beef because that's the most cheap affordable option and when I know it's from a local farm they're not fed anything bad and it's, it's been pretty much shipped directly from the farm to my house essentially if you're getting corn and soy fed meats it's probably better to go for a leaner cut because uh, a lot of the chemicals and pesticides can be held and stored in the animal fats. There still is some in the muscle meat, but a lot of it is in the animal fats itself. So Tyler is eating carbohydrates as well, so he's gonna go a little bit leaner with a cut and probably go for a strip loin. The benefit is with getting grass-fed meats is that per serving size, you're gonna get more of the fat-soluble nutrients, even if it is a leaner cut. So quality, food quality is a major thing when it comes to digestibility. And I always make sure that whenever I can, source local, grass-fed, grass-finished, not being packaged in a lot of microplastics, and then I just ensure that I'm eating enough. Would it be possible to get uh, more of your strip loins? Yeah, four. Justin's not, so not a massive red meat consumer. Yeah, it's just steak, right? <laughs> it's just steak, it's not bad. Steak. We're not doing any heart or liver or organs or anything like that, so carnivore made easy. We're actually gonna get five steaks, and we're gonna get one heart, and we're gonna eat all the steaks, and you're gonna have one heart. I love heart, you know? It gets you ready for sports, all heart. How much protein do you usually have on a daily basis? Uh, like 230. 
And that's mostly coming from like chicken and stuff? Chicken, isolate, and dairy. I eat a lot of fish too. Right. So trout and stuff. Ever do salmon or no? Yeah, I do salmon. Yeah. I don't do uh, like, like red meats often. Yeah, you ever eat those? I'll take the bone marrow out of the middle. And then, Actually? Yeah. It tastes good? Yeah, it's really good. It's like butter. Super good. You were just right there. <laughs> Oh, I thought you were saying two fruits. <laughs> There's like us running out of the vegetable section so that we're not caught in the same frame as a vegetable. Vegetables. Wait, we're getting to your favorite vegetable. What? Cucumber? It's right there. Isn't that yours? 